All right, Magic Makers, we're back for another episode. And so today, this episode, it's inspired by you. Um, recently, I just finished enrollment into my metabolic recharge program. And as I was answering questions, a lot of self-doubt, a lot of self-trust, a lot of like, oh my God, I'm so afraid I'm going to mess this up again, came up <clears throat> for a few of the folks who joined in. And I know that I've had those questions, you know, have you ever said to yourself, you know, why can't I, you know, keep going? Why do I start and always stop? Um, why do I always quit on myself? Um, why can't I finish what I start? And I know for me, I was always that person who I would start gangbusters. And then by the time I got, I don't know, sometimes two weeks, three weeks in, I was my attention got diverted with something else and I put it on the back burner and I never picked it up or I picked it up and I was like, ah, should I even bother? It's too late. I'm already too far behind. And I, I so I understand that if that's how, how you, um, how you feel. So tonight, tonight, today's episode is more about it's that mindset shift that has to happen. And here's the thing about mindset. You know, so many of us think that mindset is this like light switch, right? You know, just like weight loss, it's a, a it's a light switch. It's more of a dimmer switch. It's that we first have to recognize that we're in this mindset and we want to change it. You know, like, uh, there's a, a quote and I don't know who said it. So, but it's like the pain of staying the same has to be so um uncomfortable that you're willing to get uncomfortable to change it. And that that's mindset. You know, we always get to another, another rung on the, the, on the mindset ladder. And it's until we like, you know, feel like we can't hit, hold on to the spot anymore that we have to change. And I was that person. I was always really big at starting something all gung ho. And then, you know, life, um, and so what I had to do is I, you know, one of my mentors said this to me and I, I just repeated in my head and she said, pick your pace and make peace with it. And that was just like, you know, like, you know, lightning bolts, coconut to the head that I needed to hear because I, I know that like, sometimes I look around and you look at other people and you're like, well, how come Sharon's going faster than me? I should be able to go as fast as Sharon. And I know for me, I would, when I was competing, single moms, I would be like, if I was like, oh, I'm tired, I don't want to go to the gym. And I had friends who were competing that were single moms. And I'm like, they got two kids, full-time parenting, and they're able to go to the gym. Girl, you got nothing. You need to get your booty to the gym. And that was that was my like motivation to get to the gym. That was like my connection to the gym was like, you know what? I knew my friend Brooke was doing it and she's like a single mom. So I'm like, why can't I do it? I only got a husband. <laughs> He's old enough to stay on his own. I had nothing to juggle. The other thing that recently is that I um I started a new certification program and I know for me that I'm a slow learner. You know, it took a while for me to admit it. I'm a slow learner. And it's about 20 modules. And I told myself that I'm going to read a module every Friday morning. That's my like my time that I'm going to devote to it. Every Friday morning, I'm going to read this module. Well, I'm, you know, in the Facebook group, that's, you know, you, you get support, ask questions, so on and so forth. There's people who have like are ha already halfway through um, the program. And I'm like, oh, shoot, uh, I'm nowhere near halfway. But, and old Kim would have been like, shoot, I'm going to have to cram. I'm going to have to cram to catch up. But no, new Kim's like, no, 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 no. This is the pace that works for you. You are retaining the information because you're not binging, right? You know, and, and, I, and I know I've, I binge a lot for things. And when I binge, I don't retain. And I want to retain this information. It's all about sleep and restoration and energy management. And that's where a lot of my clients need the most support. And I'm like, that's what keeps me in my pace. It keeps me saying, okay, Kim, if I go faster, am I going to learn more? No, no, I'm not going to learn anything. If I go faster, am I going to be disappointed that I didn't retain anything? Because ev after every single module, there is a test and the test is a cumulative test and it counts towards your final, it counts towards your final certification exam. 
and you have to get at least a 75. So I've been getting at least 80 to 100 on these quizzes. And I'm like, you know what? That is evidence that my pace is okay. All right. So I want you to start looking for evidence that your pace is okay. So how do we start to come to Jesus around telling ourselves that I'm not going to finish something or I always quit. And I, I, and there's like, there's a four-step process, right? So it, it starts with it starts with self-awareness, right? Recognizing, recognizing your limitations, but also recognizing your strengths. Because so many times we get caught up in our limitations that we don't even really think about what our strengths are. Then once we once we get to, through that piece, it's now accept, accept uh, self acceptance. Okay, I know I know this stuff about me. Now here is where I'm going to accept where I am, and make peace with it. Then we move on to self-love, right? Forgiving yourself for all of the malarkey that you do. Forgiving yourself for the self-sabotage. Forgiving yourself for that. And then it's, we move into self-worth. And so when we move through those four phases, I'm going to start to feel better about myself. So I'm going to start to learn how to commit to myself, right? Many of us can commit to everybody else and a mother, but we can't commit to ourselves, right? We're the first person will put on the back burner. I'll get to my needs later. And, you know, we hear this all the time um, on a plane, they're like, you know, put your, put your oxygen mask on before you put on your child's or, you know, someone who is, uh, that you're traveling with, right? So it could be an elderly person that can't figure it out. <laughs> so put yours on first, so that way you have the capacity to help them. So as I said, you know, where do we start? It starts with self-trust. So let's just def define what um, self-trust is. And self-trust is about having an awareness of yourself. So here's the definition. It says, understand about you, who you are, and what your perception is of the world, right? It's self-importance isn't the self Oh, self-awareness is important because it allows you to have better control of your mindset. Right. So it's like if I am more aware of what frustrates me, what are some of my triggers, then I'm able to sidestep that. I'm also able to know like when I feel triggered, this these are the tools that I can pull out of my toolbox to manage it. Or if that if it's a person is triggering, you know what? I don't I don't need to be around you. Right. You you set me off. And you know the, the key is to know what it is about them that set, that set you that set you off, right? Or like if you feel frustrated in your life, you'll be better able to say what is it that frustrates me. Like define it. And, you know, I, I always am say I always say uh, if you listen to a lot of my podcasts, I always have a definition, right? Because I'm that person. I'm like, all right, let's define what this word means just to make sure you and I are on the same page. And once you and I are getting on the same page, once we define it, then we could start to, that puts a name to it. Then we could start to address it. So first it's like, if you find yourself regularly frustrated with your life, let's define it. You know, I know I was regularly frustrated that I was putting on 10 pounds a year, despite doing everything right. I was frustrated that I couldn't lift the way I wanted to lift anymore. I was frustrated that I couldn't fit into my pants. I was frustrated that I didn't feel comfortable in my own skin anymore. I was frustrated that standing in front of a room and telling you, I know something about health and fitness. And I'm like, but don't look at me right now because I'm up 30 pounds. I know that frustration, but I had to label it. I had to label what those frustration points were so that I could be like, okay, this is why I'm feeling frustrated so that I could start to chip away at those um, frustration points. Right. And then I also, was, I'm able to see both sides. I know what it's like to be like, you're doing the thing yet. You're like, I got nothing to show for it for the love of God. Um, and it's also just uh, when I'm more self-aware, then I'm able to w go into anything with a little bit more confidence. Know that, you know what, I know what my limitations are and I know what my speeds are. And then I can say, okay, that's a little bit too much for me right now, but I know what is okay for me right now. Or be able to ask better questions. You know, I'm always like, uh, when you ask better questions, you get better results. Um, so how does this relate to weight loss? 
So the more, the more I'm able to understand my external factors, the more I'm able to have a little bit more control, right? We all want a little bit more control. That's, that's what, you know, most of the clients that come to me are type A++ with a side of A++ and we want to have control. And so when I'm able to understand the external factors that trip me up, and I always ask people, you know, it's great to set goals in a, a vacuum, right? If the world was perfect, this is what would happen. But the world ain't ever going to be perfect. Let's be honest with each other. The world isn't ever going to always be perfect. However, the world can be um a little bit more make you we can make we can have the world make a little bit more sense if we start to recognize what are the things that regularly trip us up right um and try to anticipate when those happen this is what we're going to do you know it's um it's a it's a process called if then thinking right if i i, I told myself i was going to go to the gym five days this week monday through friday at 5 p.m if i have to work late i will go to the gym in the morning. If I have to work late, I will make sure that I go to the gym on Saturday. If, you know, so it's like, you already have said life might happen. And so recognize it, you know, the worst is like when you recognize life's not going to happen, you know, um, my client, Michelle, she knew mom and she was a Monday through Friday, first thing in the morning. Well, we all know kids, sometimes they don't sleep <laughs> when we want them to sleep. They get sick you know, they forget stuff and we have to bring it to school and it would always trip her up. And she's like, I have to get used to this new normal. And I, I'm like, but you, you, instead of saying getting used to the new normal and just not doing anything, we also have to, we have to say, okay, these are the things that have happened thus far. And I get it. When you're a new parent, you're like, I don't know what's going to happen. I'm lucky to keep these kids alive. But it's like, okay, if, you know, Charlie gets sick and I can't go to the gym on Monday, I'll go at lunch, excuse me. If I have to bring homework to school, then I will go after work. Or instead of you know trying to go five days a week, I'm gonna be okay with going three days a week, right? So it's like us kind of you know really seeing what's gonna be, what, uh, what's gonna, anticipating, those are the words I'm looking for, anticipating what's going on in our life. Because the better we prepare for life events that you know just are gonna happen, the la we don't see them as cataclysmic because what happens is that, you know, if we're like marching along and life happens, you know, a boss drops work on your desk at 430 and saying it has to be done before you leave um, traffic and you decide you want to go to a spin class and you are late. You get sick, flat tire, whatever then it's like, oh my God, the world's ending. It's going to be horrible. I can't believe it. Boo, poor me. Life sucks. See, it's a sign. I'm not supposed to be doing this, right? Where if I start to say, okay, these are the things that could potentially happen. And here's what's going to happen on the other side. And so that way, when I, I go in and I'm like, <sighs> I'm ready to rumble. I know it's going to happen on the other side. And then it also gives you more emotional intelligence, right? So what emotional intelligence is, is it's your ability to understand and manage your emotions so that we're not reacting in the moment. And because when we react in the moment, it's really easy to, you know, catastrophize and like blow things up that like, you know, 10 times its proportion. Um, but it also helps us a little bit be more re resilient to stress because in the moment you're like freaked out. You're like, oh my God, I was supposed to do this. And then I'm supposed to do this. And oh my God, I, I, I'm just, I suck. Right. <laughs> so it's just like, we wound ourselves up, but we always end up at the same place. I suck. It's a sign. I shouldn't be doing this. So it helps us to overcome our challenges. If we start with that, like, this is my plan, but I also have a plan B. So how do you become more self-aware? Now, I know I was not the biggest person about this, um, journaling, all right? And when I feel frustrated in my life, when I feel like, I don't know, there's like a lot of squirrely up in my brain, I journal. And, you know, it's not dear, dear diary. I saw Steve at the lockers. He looked cute. No, it's not about that. For me, you know, I journal, what do I want? All right. And I think a lot of people aren't very clear about what they want. They're like, oh, I want to lose weight. Okay. So how much? 
uh, uh, you know, some weight, tone up. And there, it's squishy. And so when you set squishy goals, you're going to get squishy. But when I set concrete goals with concrete milestones, what? Things start to happen. There's a, there's a saying, if I aim at nothing, I hit it all the time. And that's what people are like, you know, programs don't work. They fail because you don't set yourself up for success. And for me, I'm always like, what are you looking for so that I can make sure that it's included. And if I miss the mark, I want to know that, you know, I ask, that's why I ask a lot of questions so that we can start to start asking ourselves, um, so to start asking ourselves a better question. Now, you know, journaling, it wasn't an easy thing for me. So well, how I started my journaling is I had to five minutes, like set your timer five minutes. And I wrote down everything I was frustrated with, right? And then I wrote down everything I was no longer going to accept. And when I wrote it down and then I threw it into my um, fireplace and burned it so that it was my way of like being like, surrender, let it go. Now, um, and then the other way I started journaling is, um, and I'll, I'll put the, um, gotta write myself a note right here. It's called the five minute journal. And it is three things of gratitude, right? What are you grateful for? And, but the second piece of, of that gratitude, I would love for you to say, you know, what you're grateful for and why. So this morning I went to the eye doctor and I was running a little late. And it's at a place that parking can be a little tricky. And so I was kind of like, oh, crap, you know, I needed an extra 10 minutes to find a parking spot. But by some act of God, universe, whatever you believe in, up a spot, just open up right across the street. And I was like, thank you, you know? And so if I were to write down in my journal, it's like, I'm grateful for the parking, parking space across the street from the eye doctor so that I was not late for my appointment, right? That's what I'm talking about. Like have the gratitude, but why you, why are you grateful? You know, um, and it doesn't, it, like I said, I just was grateful for a parking spot. You know, I remember when, when people first started talking gratitude to me, I thought like I had to be grateful for like, you know, be grateful for being on the planet earth. No, find something like it, it, that, that having a parking spot was a lifesaver for me because I was in a really tight area that like, if I didn't find that parking spot, I was going to be driving around to find a parking spot or I was parking far and I was definitely going to be late. And I hate being late for appointments because I know what it's like for me. I, I'm, you know, when I was a trainer, like my day is like, boom, 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 boom. And if you're late, then it just kind of dominoes um, the rest of the day. Uh, and then I. Um, just start, I always say, you know, Tony Robbins always says this, right? When I ask myself better questions, I get better results. And so I have a, a link I'm going to add in here. It's, it's, it's a, from a website called Positive Psychology. And it has a bunch of like self-reflecting questions that I think are really good for you just to kind of like open up the hood. And, you know, it's going to feel uncomfortable. You know, you're going to be like, oh, I don't know, you know, pulling out your collar, feeling the heat. But I think we have to ask ourselves hard questions sometimes because I know I get asked hard questions and sometimes I'm like, dang, I want to answer that. I don't want to think about that right now. But again, as I started off this podcast, if I say to myself, I don't, if the pain of where I am starts to get too much, I have to change. So the next rung is, is self-acceptance. Self so here's the definition understanding and recognizing your abilities and your limitations, okay? So it's this here, it's not future oriented. It's like taking a snapshot, like where am I right now? And how, what are, what are my capabilities in pursuing things, right? Um, and it's, I don't want this to be confused with self-esteem because self-esteem is perception where self-acceptance is like, dude, this is where I am. This, 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 it is what it is. Like what you see is what you get. And here is where that inner critic will come out and try to go 30 rounds with you. Like it is a prize fighter. Um, 
And, you know, here's also where we think I need to be perfect in order for me to lose the weight. You know, here's the list. And if I am not, you know, checking every box, then I suck. And if I can't check every other box, then it's horrible. You know, I have um, clients check in with me on, uh, on a weekly basis. And one of the check-ins, it'll, it'll be about um, food. And I'll be like, you know, how'd you do with protein? How'd you do with carbs? How'd you do with fats? So forth. And it'll be like, great, good, better, best. And then then underneath it, it'll be like, how would you rate yourself? And that they'll say, oh, fabulous, fabulous on the carbs, fabulous on the protein, fabulous on the good fats, no alcohol. And then I'd be like, all right, how would you rate the week? It was just okay. Inner critic, inner critic, perfectionism. You, it might've been one small meal. And so I'll follow up and I'm like, okay, so I'm looking here, like uh, you checked all the boxes, you crushed it with your, you know, your, your food. Yet when you, I asked you to rate yourself, you're like, ah, it was an okay week. Well, on Tuesday, um, I went over and I had, I went over to, I went over to my mother-in-law's house and I had a piece of cake. Okay. So out of seven days, you had one piece of cake and that made it an okay week. And so as a coach, I'm trying to be like, you know, Deb, that one piece of cake in the grand scheme of life, is it going to blow up your results? If we had cake every day, maybe, but like right now, just one piece of cake, that's called life. And so I want you to really start to, you know, start us breaking away from this um, inner critic and that inner critic always tells us it has to be perfect. And so um, what I have my clients do, and I'm going to encourage you to do the same thing, experiment with good enough. And I am a recovering perfectionist, right? I can be leading the perfectionist anonymous meetings. And so I remember I was listening to a podcast, uh, maybe like five or six years ago. And the podcast host said, go for the B minus. And I was like, go for the B minus. And so I was like, all right, tell me more. And so she said, you know, C is average, right? And we don't want you to be average, but a B minus means you're still doing the work, but you're doing it at a pace that is sustainable. And that's what she had me because the pace I was trying to go at it was good for a while until I couldn't. It was good for a while until I couldn't, right? It didn't take into account life. And for me, my perfectionism came in definitely around my health and fitness like because I was working a job I hated. <laughs> and so my health and fitness was all I could control, right? I had a crap boss <laughs> that I would just like despised. Don't ask me where it was because I'm not going to tell you. Um, but I despised it. And so it was like the only thing I felt like I could control in my, my life was my health and my fitness. So I made everything revolve around it, that my workouts had to be a certain way. My food had to be a certain way. It was just, if this was like, I was so regimented in it. And I had those like really high highs and really low lows. And when she said, go for the B minus, that was like free. I needed someone to give me permission to do that. So if you're looking for permission, here's your permission slip. I will sign it. If you need me to give it to somebody, I will. But I needed to break up with a perfection and go for the B minus. So where I translated that is to, I call it my good, better, best. What makes it good? What will make it better? And what will make it the best? So um, for my workouts, I used to be seven days a week, Sally. <laughs> I am no longer seven day a week, Sally. So I said a good, a good week's five days. A better week is four, a good week is three. And then I refined it even more. And I said, let's make that to be just movement. And that, and it, the movement at least 30 minutes. And so that way, even if I couldn't go to the gym, I was traveling, whatever, I know I could find 30 minutes to just walk, right? Move my body, get in my steps. And that has been the most ultimate thing for me. It's, it, it's been an absolute game changer for me. The other thing, uh, obtainable, right? As, as I just said, I was like, I had to come up with things that were obtainable. So I see my perfectionists, they have this to-do list that like is like a mile long and they're like, they look at it and they're like, 
I'm never going to get to the bottom of this. I'm never going to get to the bottom of this. And the one way I was able to break myself of like that feeling of like constant, like overwhelm anxiety was I said, I need to pick three things every single day. Like, sure. I have to run into do list, but don't bring it with you because then you'll just look at it and you might get distracted and start doing things that aren't important to you right now. So I always say to people like, Every, every night before I, you know, kind of like, as I close the day, every night I say, all right, what needs to happen tomorrow? What are the three things, if I do them tomorrow, that's going to move the needle forward? And so for, for example, right now, you know, say this podcast, I was like, okay, um, I'm going away for the weekend. This podcast is due to my editors on Monday. So here it is Thursday, I'm going to record it. So that my priority is to make sure that I, I've written, recorded, and uploaded all the pieces to Dropbox for my podcast producer. That's that's my those are my three priorities today. And if I have a fourth, then I'll go I'll go back to the list. But I'm not going to think about anything else but making sure I wrote this podcast, I recorded it, and I get it up to Dropbox. After that, then I could pick something else. But you know, so many people are like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna record a podcast. Actually, I'm gonna record two podcasts. Then I'm gonna you know climb Everest. Then I'm gonna build a new website. Right? Oh, and then I'm gonna throw in a workout. And so I I had to learn to scale that back. And so now when I have those three things, after I record this and I get up upload this Dropbox, I'm gonna be like, I win. I rock. And then I can say, I can decide, I can add, I can now add something onto my day, or I can be like, you know what, I'm going to tap out for the day and, and go with how my energy feels, or maybe, or maybe I'm going to read, you know, it, it just, it all depends, right? I, I choose, I, I get to choose. And I have a whole masterclass on perfection. So if you're someone who's like, yeah, girl, that sound like me. I have a whole masterclass on perfection. The last piece here in the self-acceptance is that you have to create a vision of what success looks like for you. And I, I, I suck at this. Um, I have to take a big step back in order to do this. Um, one of my, um, um, my business coach asked me the other day, she's like, Kim, well, what's your vision for your business? And I was like, you know what? Um, I can't ask, I can't answer those kind of questions off the top of my head. Like I'm not that person. Like I'm like, I need to like sit in it and say, what do I want? And I want you to sit in it and say, what do you want? Because when I can, so if if we're talking about self-acceptance, I know like, okay, what are my abilities? Like what's possible for me? And then what are my limitations? Right? So it's like a lot of us, our, our time is our limitations. But then if I look at my limitations of time, I can start to like do a time audit and say, what are my list of things that I'm doing based on my time? Do I need to set better boundaries around? What are the things I'm doing on my time that I can stop doing? You know, for example, this podcast, I was like, I wanted to do this for four years, but I was trying to do it on my own. And I was like, you know what? I can't do it on my own because I need someone who I can just say, I just want to talk on the mic. I just want to talk to interesting people. And I need someone who I, I can just say, here, I finished talking, here you go. And that's Derek, right? Derek takes, takes it, zips it all together. I don't know what he does. It's magic for me. I believe in magic. I, I didn't want to do any of the writing. So I have a, a program that um, uh, voice dictates this. My assistant, Leanne, she makes it pretty, writes me notes, makes me graphics. All I do is talk, I show up. So all I, so for me, my only focus is I sit here and I write this and I deliver this great content to you, which I hope is great content, hint, hint, right? So that's what I want you to think about. Like, think as I think about like, what are my abilities and what are the limitations? And as I look at my limitations, what are some of the things that I can, that can push off my list? And of my abilities are the things I need to learn, right? You know, like, what do I need to learn in order to get what I want? So it comes back to my visions at the top of the, you know, the top of the page, this is what I want. And then based on what my vision is, these are my capabilities. These are my limitations and being able to start to move things apart. And if this is a conversation you want to have, I'm really good at time audit. Really, really, really good at it. All right. 
so the next piece is that self love, right? So here's a, is the third kind of, I'm going to call it the third wrong here is self love. And so in order for us to love ourselves, we have to let go of past mistakes. Who here has not failed? Okay, so I don't see any hands raised. Okay, granted, I am in my office by myself. However, everyone fails. Everyone trips over their own feet from time to time. Everyone trips over thin air from time to time. That's okay. Failing is not fatal. Failing just shows you either. I was, for me, when I fail, I was going too fast. I was trying to do or trying to go too fast or do too much. That's when I fail. Like, so, I, if, so I start to think about, you know, people will ask me to do things and they're like, Kim, you know, for you could do, um, so let's just use my business as an example. People are like, oh, Kim, you know, you could uh, do live workouts all the time. Um, Kim, you could um, be doing, you know, doing more, more writing. Kim, you could write a book. Yeah, I could do all of that. However, I look at what I have the capacity for as far as my time, and I don't have the capacity for it. So I'm like, you know what? If it makes, this is my, this is my litmus test. If it makes me want to drink and makes me feel stressed out, then it, I don't have time for it. It's going to stay over on my idea bin until there's room in my schedule. Right. And if, and if something is on my schedule and it starts to feel heavy, then it comes off of my schedule. And that's where, where it, it took me a long time to get there. You know, I used to teach. 15 classes a week. It's just each 15 class a week. And I was always running. And I would, I had maybe one or two hours between classes of clients. And I was like, God, why isn't my business growing? Why isn't my business growing? Because I wasn't, I didn't have the time to focus on it. So I had to do myself, I do had to do a time audit. And I had to really start to look at like the things I was doing. And I had to start winnowing things down. And the first thing I did was like, you know what? I'm not sleeping because when I work in the morning, like I was, you know, getting up at like five or six in the morning to go open a gym or train a client or teach a class. And I was like, you know what? I, I stink because I don't sleep at night because I'm afraid I'm going to oversleep. I overslept once 15 years ago and it's still in my brain. So I felt like I was going to oversleep. So I wasn't, so I wasn't sleeping. I was constantly exhausted. And by the time I hit my evening clients, I just was like, I don't care what you do. I was so exhausted. So I was like, you know, all right, I first have to move around my schedule because I can no longer work in the morning. Like that was like, that was like my, like, that was my limitation and my ability to teach in the morning just wasn't there. I, I could, like, could I do it? Yeah. But it was a limiting factor for other things in my life. So I had to go. So when you start thinking in those terms, like it's not, I was failing. And then I had to forgive myself that like, it wasn't, it, it wasn't a, a fatal thing. It was just like, I'm not effective at that time of day. And then it showed me what's possible. Like, so it, it's, it, it's a double, it's a, it's a double edged, it's a double edged sword, right? So it's like, it showed me where I was overdoing. It showed me where my obstacles were. And it just kind of opened the door for like, okay, what's possible if this isn't working for me? With state, with self-love, it's, the state of appreciation for yourself, right? So it's breaking up with the self-judgment. I had to stop judging myself because I wasn't really effective in the morning. I, it, I had to prioritize myself and my, my, my health and my, like me not sleeping with my sanity. And I created boundaries, you know? So right now I literally, I do not work before 9 a.m. And if I do work before 9 a.m., it's a very special circumstance, right? You know, it's, um, I, I, I still teach a few classes, you know, and, and I'll sub, right. I'll sub from time to time, but I know that I am not going to take that on as a full-time, uh, a full-time gig. And so I've, I also forgave myself for like, you know what, it's okay. If I put up a boundary, it's okay. If I disappoint people, because at the end of the day, I have to not play, um, the, like, <sighs> I can't believe I told her I was going to do this. I can't believe I'm doing this. Oh, I can't believe, like, have you, have you ever done that where you just keep like beating yourself up in your head while you were doing something you said you weren't going to do? 
in it that's 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 honoring that's honoring your love that's honoring your love for yourself and so how do we kind of start to hone into our uh how do we start to hone into our, our self-love well first you know give yourself permission permission to be selfish right permission to put yourself first from time to time you know permission to work on something outside of your body like for me a lot my workouts are more about how did i look aesthetically now my workouts are more about mental health than aesthetics um breath work you know really finding a way to just like calm myself down when i was like oh, i can't i can't have so much to do right it was like the breath work really just helped me like it's three minutes and it worked for me far better than meditation because it was very hard. I, I felt like when I was meditating, I felt like a failure because I couldn't quiet my mind. And even though I was like, that's not the goal. Like, you know, keep bringing your mind back. I was like, I keep bringing my mind back like a wandering toddler. So where breath work was just like, I, it, I needed that active work versus the passive work. Maybe someday I'll meditate, but I, I like, I forgave myself that meditation wasn't really working for me. Um, taking the action, you know, many people are, are waiting for motivation. The motivation comes from the action because once I do the action, then I'm like, you know what? That felt good. I'm glad I did it. You know, I always say no one skips to the gym, but you're glad you went after you, after you finished. Um, and, and the self-care, right? The self-care, um, I, I did a, a podcast about self-care um, is uh, bullshit. And self-care is more isn't about the manicures and the pedicures it's literally sitting quiet and like you know I, i've told the story of, of my friend pam she locked herself in her pantry and puts a, the egg timer outside and her kids can't talk to her until the egg timer goes off that's self-care right that's that's just saying you know mama needs a time out um that self-care it's you know Sure. If you like bubble baths, um, for me on Friday, uh, before COVID, uh, on Fridays, there was a sauna, uh, around the corner from a gym I taught at and I would sit there and I would be like, I would be there for an hour. And that was my, like, that was my downtime. It was just the most rejuvenating thing. And I, you know, as I say it to you right now, I'm like, I need to get back to that. That felt really good for me. Um, self-care is making room for your health. You know, I have a lot of clients who, when they first start with me, they're like, oh, work, you know, when work slows down, I'll be able to do it. When, you know, the kids go back to school, I'll be able to do it. And guess what? Life ain't going to get any slower. So it's like, we have to start to learn how to navigate health, fitness in between, um, you know, the, the pockets of our life. And so the final piece here is your self-worth, right? We get it's at the top of the pyramid. And so when we do all the work, building our way up to the pyramid, then it's like, it's, we're finally getting to a point where we know and understand who we are and what our, who we are and what our needs are. We're starting to accept, we're starting to, I apologize for the, uh, the call. <laughs> Hof uh, hopefully it stops. Self-worth is, is accepting you, yourself as you, right? Who you are, it's taking full responsibility, right? You own your, you own your actions. Like that's what I always tell people, you know, some people are like, oh my God, the food just showed up and I just couldn't say no. Yeah. You can always say no. You know, I, um, regularly I go out with friends and sometimes I want a glass of wine and sometimes I don't. And it's, it's be, it's being an advocate for yourself. You know, I, I went to, I'm going to call him a loose friend. He was a friend of a friend and I've met him on several occasions. And so we went to his house for, for, um, cocktails and I didn't want a cocktail. And he's like, you know, I really think people who don't drink are boring. And I was like, hmm. and then I'm like, I guess I'm boring. Right. I, I just have to like, let it roll off my back. Right. I'm over 40 years old. I don't need your acceptance. Boom. 
mic drop. All right, I don't give a crap what you think I should be doing in my life because my life is my life. And so if I want it, I want a drink, I'm going to have a drink. If I don't, I don't. All right. So no, like be, throw those boundaries up because like so many of you are like, oh, I don't want to be rude. I had so I had salt water. I wasn't like, it's crap. I'm not having anything here. No, <laughs> it was like, I just don't want a cocktail right now. And avoid negativity. Like I would just like shields up. Like I, whenever someone who's like negative around me and I just can't be bothered, shields up. And it's, and I get it. It's really hard because some of those negative Nancy's they're family members. I got them in my family too, that like, you know, despite everything that's going on wonderfully around them, they always got something to complain about that, like, you know, you know, they could have just like won the lottery. <laughs> well, you know, we just got 30 inches of snow and I had a shovel this morning. Okay. All right. Well, good luck with that. You know, you, you always will have those people. And I just, for me, I try to limit my access because it's really easy. Um, the, the, the whole theory is called like a bucket of crabs. And so if you ever look at a bucket of crabs, if there is a crab that looks up and they're like, Hey, there's daylight. I'm going to try to crawl my way out. There's another crab that's like, Oh, hell no. And it tries to drag, uh, drag down the other crab. So I want you to start thinking about like, are there, do you have those crabs in your life? And yeah, they can be family members. They can be spouses, right? They're part, longtime partners, best friends. And there's a saying, you, uh, you are the sum of the five people you surround yourself with. And so think about who are the people you surround yourself with and, you know, are they your champions? Are they your cheerleaders? Because the only way you're going to do your best and work through all of these steps to really own and trust yourself is to be around people who got your back. People who are like, yeah, you know, go Kim, go. And not in a cheerleader way. You know, I also want people to be like, sometimes my poop smells, <laughs> but, and, you know, guide me in the right direction. But I also want people to be like, not being like, you know, Eeyore, <laughs> you know, no Pollyannas, but less Eeyores in my life. So don't be afraid to get started. All right. Tell yourself why, right? If you are thinking like, I want to lose weight, tell yourself why get clear about why it is that you are ready to lose the weight and make a choice, right? Put a line in the sand and say, this is, this is what I'm doing. And I'm going for it and connect because when I, those, when I make clear choices and I make a connection, that's, what's going to drive me when times get tough, when I'm like, Oh, hell no that I'm like, okay, I told myself that I was going to lose these last 10 pounds. I told myself that I was going to be, you know, eating better by eating, you know, 400 grams of vegetables every single day. I told myself I was going to be going to the gym three to five days a week. I'm putting it in my calendar. I'm writing down what I'm grateful for. Right. So it's like, I'm reinforcing my behaviors in the positive direction that I want to move in. So I hope this was inspirational to someone who always tells themselves, what if, I keep, what if I keep quitting on myself? Here's your roadmap to stop quitting on yourself. All right, magic makers, enjoy the rest of your day and I will talk to you next week.